thing is, I thought it was Deadpool for a second. Not sure. We've commented on too many players betting today. <laughs> well, there's two two versions of Monopoly in the background for Sotol. So he obviously believes in the heart of the cards. <laughs> heart of the Monopoly cards. <laughs> Interesting. Well, chance. Chance. Heart of the cards. Tell you what, you've taken a chance and you're going straight to prison. I'm actually, um, I'm actually the best Monopoly player I know. I have a Facebook album of photos. You only know of me winning two Monopoly. people. You have no friends. Just me and me and Dan, and we don't even really want to be your friends. I think Martin's my friend over in production. No, Ma he doesn't like you either. I have no idea what's going Ma on, Ma but Matt we're comes not out jumping with me <laughs> <behind>. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Mulligan has happened and we're jumping straight into the match here. It is going to be a patron warrior, I'm assuming, judging yep. on the fact that there's a patron in hand. Thumbs up to you. This is top Thanks, top tier analysis by our resident boy. Our Joe resident Ma boy. <laughs> Joe Munchables, honey. Of I course the world full time to just come in and be a boy. It's to even up the... Uh, Which is sad because you're actually a girl. So do you think... <laughs> Back on track a little bit. I'm gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna let one. we're gonna let Dan bring it back to a reality. Here. Um, do you play this mind control tech on curve here? What well, kind of on curve? Because you've got nothing else to play, or do you wait and say, okay, if this is a patron warrior, I'm gonna steal a patron? I I just guess play on curve. You need to get some sort of threat down. It, it's weak against death bite, weak against fiery war axe, but you can't sit there and hero power and do nothing. So you've got you've literally got nothing to play right now for green sheep and for, for the foreseeable future. Luckily for him, though, there is no Fiery Warx or anything to answer it. Yeah, but now there's a, an Acolyte, 3-2 Acolyte, which is going to guarantee two card draw here. And Druid, oh, a Shredder coming off the top does help. That is something he can play. But Druid does typically struggle against Patron in terms of when there are Patrons on board, it struggles to remove yes. the Patrons because its only removal is the likes of Swipe, really, uh, which is just going to generate more Patrons. So he really, Green Sheep is looking here to get as much ball presence as possible, especially now he has that Force of Nature, Savage Raw combo, mm -hmm. RIP. We will never see it again. N well, next turn's going to be filthy for uh, Sotl because he can patron in a range, coin, whirlwind. This turn, I imagine Cochron Elite is... Cochron Elite is... <laughs> <laughs> Cochron Elite is pretty good. There's an insane amount of cards to be playing with on turn four. He's going to coin out the well, lower theb right now. It's like he just knew there was a, a force of nature in hand, two force of natures, so he can't use either of them. And like you said, he's got a nice and early patron board here, which he can just he can, throw down. He can patron in a range, but he can't patron whirlwind now, I think, because he's on five he's mana. He's just on the five mana, yeah. You can I, play the, the unstable goal this yeah, turn, though. So the wild growth the confused me. The wild growth did confuse you. What's he? What's he hovering over right now? He's hovering over Armor Smith. Smith. So I guess you can Armor Smith on Stable Ghoul. Yeah, that's fine. Will win for the two armor. Solid play. And now you run the decision of do I play Lower Theb and Hero Power and get rid of this Unstable Ghoul now, which looks like it's going to be the play. Yep. Because it's just too risky to leave it up, especially with the amount of cards in hand for Sotl. It Do also stops. Sorry, it also stops uh, the patrons being generated next turn because he's not going to be able to use the spells if he does drop this lower third. And that's what he's worried about right now because he knows that he is going to struggle to deal with any kind of patron board. Yes, so now there's options for Sotl. He could Corcoran Elite plus mm. Fiery War Axe. He could Fiery War Axe plus Cheap Corsair for one mana. But we know he's just not going to commit to those patrons just yet. Looks like he's going to go for the Corcoran Elite. Swing that one in. I would assume he'll keep the Armorsmith on yeah, board here. He'll want to because it'll just get him so much value in terms of uh, when he starts spamming those patrons, builds up armor, puts him well out of combo range. Double combo in hand for Green Sheep here. And I mean, actually, that's a kind of a win condition. He can. So potentially 28 damage over two turns. And that. Plus just with the Boom Bots and the Doctor Boom. I mean, even if. Sotl does generate some pen patrons here. I mean, you're it's looking at a the, double combo to win the game. The double combo against him. This is the story of Sotl in the Premiership. I like, mean, what's going to be a big player is no. the Dread Corsair, if it can stay alive. Because it can just hold off a little bit of damage, well, maybe a little bit. Maybe enough to kind of stop him dying in two turns. I don't know. But yeah, 
double combo coming out will feel awful. Why are you? Why? I mean, what's the what's the plan this turn? Are you gonna Corsair first to try and stop Grim Patron being a target of the Boom Bots after you go for the Whirlwind? And I guess because it's cheap as well. Why not play it now? I guess yeah, it's it's one extra. One extra more minion that can be hit by the Boombots because you and don't want gets, it to hit. Gets you more armor as well. Of course. Everyone, Which will put him slightly out of range of a double combo, depending on whether he's Boombots. Oh, he's the really Armorsmith. Boom Do you just go for the combo now, right? Because you use your face to trade into you, the 3-2. Yeah, I you, think you, you set this up. Yeah, you, you just push 9 plus uh, 12, 21 damage. And Sotl will know. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he just goes face with everything no. and then... So you use your face to trade out the Corsair and then you just go face, 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 I think. I don't think you even worry about these patrons. You could potentially, if you want to play the really safe game, you could just say, okay, I'm just going to clear this board. No. But I think you you hedge your bets. Okay, uh, okay. okay. Wow. That's so interesting. 21 damage would have put Sottle down... at 14, right? And that would have meant that he was in combo range the next turn with hmm. no armor up. I mean, what are you worried about? Really? I mean, I, I suppose maybe the thought process is, okay, if in the two turns I don't actually have the full lethal, then what's my follow-up then? How, yeah. how do I actually finish the game off? Because yeah. I'm against a warrior. Like, it's true. They will slowly but surely just keep on stacking that armor and get further wait, wait, wait. and further out of range. How much armor did he have previous to the... Oh, wait, because yeah, Armorsmith went down, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it was definitely worth considering. That's why mm. I said he might do it. Had it's had he not played that Dread Corsair, Corsair then and then Whirlwind did previous to that, and then that may have been cause enough for... Green Sheep to go because I imagine if Green Sheep had gotten to 12 on that turn, then he would have said, "Okay, even with armor up." Yeah, and he didn't have the swipe or anything in hand, so he wouldn't have been able to mm. to say, "Okay, I've got a swipe to follow up." I mean, it, if he's running Living Roots, that's some more damage that he can provide. It's looking pretty good now for Sotle. Yeah, he's in a good situation. It certainly feels like he's. Fully in control of this game. The Boombots not being his best mate smart now. Do you trade this out now with the Boom or do you just hit face? Yeah, you just go face. What feels worse mm. is that if he had kept the Savage Roars as well with an Innovate, then he would have had lethal. Because he could have forced an nature double Savage Roar. But, I mean, it's all... What would that have, what would that have put him at, though? I mean, that would be lethal right now, because it's 6, 12, 24, yeah, 29, 31. You're talking about the you fact that he, I know, yeah. yeah you wouldn't yeah, have got to this position without using it. He wouldn't even yeah. got to this position, so... Because the, the patron board was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So but he had an innovate earlier. Right now, one. you could... Swipe onto the Frothing Berserker. And... If you trade, then, your 5-1 into the 7-7, seven, seven, it basically means that he can never use his Death Spike without clearing his own... Yeah, but he just uses Dr. Boom. Boom first. <laughs> you have to combo here. Hush now. <laughs> Sleep now. <laughs> Only dreams. And with that, Druid's win condition kind of goes down the drain. Welcome to new meta Druid. <laughs> with no combo. Mm. Hey, no, they've got muster for nature now. Is that a thing? Muster for nature, yeah. Five mana, summon three, two, two treants. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. She can about rage for one card. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's gonna be able to draw another one with the Echo Light. It's like a Echo Heavy, except like no sugar. And he's gonna have to Ancient of Law to heal himself up to nine here. Sotl not showing that he had another death spite, obviously. I've lost my previous screen, so... Me too, so have I. buddy. Me too. Oh, there there we're we back go. now. We're back, friends. He's actually going to go for the card draw here. I mean, th at the end of the day, how... He's thinking, how do I win how, this game? Or how do I lose, right? Because I mean, he's got five health. I mean, yeah, I mean... You lose to death spite. 
core on Elite, but can you afford to play around that? I don't think you can, though. And he's got lethal next turn. Yeah. Possibly 5, 9, 13, 14. Yeah, plus the Druid of the Claw attack. Alright, so he drew a patron, but that's not actually enough. Let's get him back in, or to, to win him the game. Execute available right now. Do you execute here just to try and. I think you have to. You have to execute and death bite here, right? Yeah. It's not going to feel great doing so. So if you. If your shade grows to four next turn. He's got lethal next turn if nothing's cleared. Yeah, but you, you have to execute the 5 3, but do you not bother attacking into shade? Do you just attack face with the death bite? Because. He'd need another. He'd need another, another living. Another living roots to secure lethal here. Opting not to use his execute. Hmm. That's an interesting um, one for me. Which Smart means shield. that's game over if he doesn't execute it. Yeah. Yep, that's going to be it. The Druid of the Claw into charge mode. And then a Swiper Rooney. And. Well, Green Sheep kind of turned that one around. Why wouldn't you use the execute there? Obviously, the play hmm. from the play that I was suggesting was because it's I a could lot different when you c we yeah. can obviously see the cards. But what, what, what are you? I guess are you worried about an ancient of war or something? Are you worried about another? I mean, what what are you worried about that you wouldn't just execute the shade that's going to grow? The, the play that I was thinking through in my head was, I I I don't have any burst left apart from Gromash, so I guess I'm playing in the sense that if I top deck Gromash next turn, I win. But you execute the five three, shade grows to a. Four, three, and you only have eight damage burst in hand. Obviously, Sotto had no idea, but you've got to think about with both both Force of Nature's and Savage Roars gone. What is the maximum amount of burst that a Druid could do with ten mana? Well, the maximum amount of burst you can get is Living Roots, Druid of the Claw, Swipe, something like that. Anyway, which gives you maximum ten damage. So you'd have to have those three exact cards to get lethal. Whereas if I execute the five three, attack face with the, it still would have been lethal though. Why would it have been lethal? If he'd he would have had a four mana. No, because he had thirteen health. I'm trying to think. So he'd been one off lethal. Oh no! Wait, hero power. Damn. Yeah, yeah that's true. And he, unless he could have hit. No, because he had enough armor, enough uh, mana to armor up. So he could have armored up and would have, would have been even with living roots one off lethal. Yeah. You would have had to had innovate hero power at the end of it as well. It was a tough call. It's a shame because after yeah. you if you after you've seen both. Of the combo's gone, you're always going to feel good, but unfortunately there just wasn't I just, enough I just, burst that came in, up. In my something. head, I drew it at five health, and you've got two charges on your death bite. You have to put him on a two-turn timer. You have to turn. You have to turn around and say, "Got to hit him in the face because otherwise, how do I win?" Um, but Grishy yeah. played it incredibly well. He you know, you can't did. take that away from him. And uh, I know, with considering he had used his combos and everything, it was. Uh, it was definitely going to be an interesting game from that point on. When I mean, even from the point when we saw two combos in hand, that was when I was like, okay, this is going to be an interesting game, to say the least. But let's take a look at our versus screen and see what these guys are going to be bringing to the remaining games. There's obviously Druid winning out for Green Sheep, so he has Shaman and Warlock remaining as subtle with Druid, Mage, and Warrior. But we are into the mulligan, and it is going to be Warrior for subtle and Shaman for Green Sheep. And Obviously, we've just seen this warrior come out. It is that Grim Patron, and if I'm not mistaken, that looks like a face shaman. You're on the ball. Yeah, you are, buddy. Running flame jugglers as well, and the Tuscar. That was the, end of the conversation. <laughs> the Tuscar as well, actually, which has been run in a few face shaman decks recently. Personally, I, uh, I'm not so sure on it. Um, but it's definitely seen some success, some success in the current meta. What are your opinions on it, Kenan? Face Shaman. Of the Tuscar. Oh, the Tuscar Totemic. I was just waving relentlessly for uh, for a potential bottle of water. But I, yeah, I like uh, I like Tuscar Totemic. I think it's kind of an interesting um, addition to the Face Shaman deck, and I think it can have some s seriously good value. I mean, you. You're happy with Manatai Totem, you're happy with Totem Golem, you're happy with Flame Tongue Totem, you're happy with... At the right spell, time, a, a Tall spell, Totem as well. Totem, you're happy with Spell Power Totem for the most part. So I think it's a pretty good addition here. And I would imagine that you either coin it now or you just Flame Juggler. 
face juggler not living up to its... Uh... Well, actually, that's kind of what he wanted. Yeah, he was, yeah. obviously, but either way, he could kill it with the tunnel trog or with the, uh, the lightning yep. bolt. And next turn, he can tusk to Temek. Mm. I like the early use of uh, the execute last turn as well from Sotl. I mean, against Face Shaman, there's not really a whole lot that you need to save that for, so getting the Totem Golem out of the way early always going to be a solid play. So just, do you do Corcoran, take out the Tunnel Trog now? You could even just play Dread Corsair on Curve without a weapon. What now? Mm. You, could, you could kill the Flame Juggler with Corcoran and then something else has to deal with it. For sure. You don't... It sucks to trade that four mana card into just a one mana trog. It also sucks for it to get killed by a lava shock though. So. I, I don't. I didn't like taking out the flame juggler because I just feel like, yes, you lose Corcoran, but you do take out one of the biggest threats that the face shaman has by taking out the tunnel trog yeah. early. Uh, this is definitely a matchup that is is tough it's for the patron tough. warrior. Yeah, super tough. And realistically, if someone had told me after the Warsong Commander nerf that Patron would still be alive to this day, I would have laughed in their face. I think actually even Sotl laughed when anyone suggested it would still be alive, but the fact that it's managed to stay in the meta is so impressive. I love the kind of control element of the deck now, the mid-range kind of Patron deck, but against such an aggressive face deck, it really struggles to compete with the early board. And then there's just that spell damage from the Shaman, which just finishes everything off nice and tidy. So he's not bothered about the potential draw of the Acolyte at this point. Just pushing for the lethal. Yeah. Well, there's a double Dread Corsair. It's pretty good. <laughs> available. That's certainly going to slow this down. It's interesting to see a double Dread Corsair in a Patron Warrior deck, yeah. by the way. Classically, you only see one, if any, whatsoever. And that armor up as well is going to be... Uh Pretty tasty for him. Certainly not going to be saying no to HP at this early stage in the game when he's already down to just 12 remaining. But actually, the the face shaman kind of running out of steam a little bit. If this trog is kind of the the last remaining bit of aggression aside from spells now, so it's kind of just relying on draws. So on Titan, probably the worst in this situation. Does buy you some time. He might be debating cracking face. He is just going to opt to take out both of these taunts, which I think is fine, especially when you've got things like the Doomhammer in your deck. Just start spamming the board with patrons now. Yeah, you've got to. You really yeah. need to get this ball control and just hope that he can't finish you off in the next couple of turns, which Shaman often does. Taunt Totem is going to keep Tuskar Totemic alive. Which Depending is just on the draws though, because I mean, you play Patron, then you hit the the Totem, but then you've got to draw from the Acolyte, so depending what happens, if you get a Whirlwind, if you get True, yeah. any other Activator, really. It's what he values more. He could drop his Fight Fury War Axe yeah, to okay, generate the yeah. Whirlwind effect and then kill That's a good the play. That's a good play. I was going to say, does he value that more over the, uh, yeah. over the armor? Think Which he, he did. Yeah. Pays off as well because Lower Head comes out. So the other way around, you oh, wouldn't have been able to finish off the board. He's going to be looking for spell damage here. Spell damage oh, is there. There you go. And Sotl knows that, that there's definitely going to be some sort of spell there. You just go face, right? You, 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 you lava burst for sure. Be, well, you can lava shock into you lava, lava shock, burst. You can lava shock into lava burst. Yeah. And put him down to two. To Did two, you? and then he can get back up to four, but he could play a lower, lower third next turn. But then Doomhammer gives you lethal. Yes, so I think you have to do it this turn. And even a lava burst. Lower third increases it by five or six, sorry. Or it increases five. it by five. five. So even a so lava, even burst, a lava burst, burst. Well, he'll, he'll be overloaded. I bet he will be overloaded, yes, you're right. So Doomhammer is the ideal draw in this situation. Battle Rage isn't too bad here. But you I don't think you can afford to play it. I think no, you have you to play the armor. armor but you need the armor. Even so, there's probably a two turn timer now for uh yep. for Green Sheep, so he has the potential to draw into some burn cards. He does want that Doomhammer though. Doomhammer off the top would give him 
guaranteed lethal. He has to kill the uh, mm. spell totem there in case. Oh, that's painful. In case the lightning bolt or something like that came down. Still, unless we get Armorsmith Whirlwind, he only needs one damage with that lava burst next turn. There's one damage that he might not find. I know that Face Armor is full of damage, but sometimes when you need it, it just doesn't come out. Obviously, he can roll for the the spell power totem to provide his lethal. Yes, that could work too. So he's got some outs, you know. He has got some outs. Really nice battle rage here. Three targets. Another battle rage comes out, but realistically... You want to armor up, don't armor you? Smith. Um, armor Smith's good. Battle rage armor up mm. is fine, though, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, playing at this turn, you don't get anything out of the armor smith, so yeah. if, if he's going to kill you next turn, playing that armor smith right there is not going to make a difference. Slam in a rage, nothing really saved the day. Armor up is going to keep him alive from the lava burst. Depends on the draw though, because full mana this time, no overload remaining for green sheep. That's oh, a no. bad. Is going to be the end of the game. But to be fair, there's not really that many cards that in this deck that weren't really going to be lethal. A lot of his non-charge, a lot of his non-spell minions were played early on in the game anyway, so it was pretty good odds that he was going to draw that one through and does manage to do so, and that means now he's pushed it to 2-0 against Sotl in this series. I don't, know, I don't know what Dan said at the start of this series, but he's definitely placed a curse here. Sotl is one of the best Grim Patron players in Europe, if not the world. I'll give him that. But when a face shaman can just generate that much steam and have that much spell power, it just it's so hard to play against and so draining to play against as well. It just feels like everything is going against you. I agree. I do agree with you. I, I do feel like he misplayed. I feel in like the, in the first game you. I think, feel like he misplayed in the I, second game as well. I, 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 I feel. I honestly, I, I think he's a, a brilliant player, but not taking that tunnel trog out strikes me as, as slightly odd because it is one of the most threatening cards that the face shaman have. It snowballs like crazy. It's like not taking out a secret keeper when you have the chance against a secret paladin because those kind of things can. You, you know, you've got to call their bluff, essentially. If you don't call their bluff, you can get punished. And you saw there that he was punished for it. But if he hadn't have drawn an Argent Horse Rider off the top there, that was Sotl's <laughs> yeah. game and Sotl would have won. Yeah, so you can say that about anything, right? You yeah, know, well, but that's and that's the thing. It, it, you, that is the nature it's of not, card games. It's not necessarily yeah. a misplay. It's a decision that can either go your way or won't go your way at the end of the game. But then what is a misplay, right? A misplay is a decision that can go your way, or, or you know, that is a decision that you've made that hasn't gone your way. Yeah, but if he had... Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Right, anyway, anyway, I, let's uh, move on, because I don't think that argument's going to end anytime soon, but it is going to be Green Sheep 2-0 oh, now with Warlock remaining, and Sotl still with all of his decks, and Sotl sticking to his guns here. He's going to stick on the patron, and Green Sheep with his Zoo Warlock. I believe this was the very first deck he played in the Premiership as well, and it's a deck that I think he's brought every single week, including his... And Hanson McCann as well. Mekano. Wow, okay. I love that card. I also hate it, depending on whether I have it or my opponent has it. <laughs> I think that's how I feel about most cards, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is the original Chinese version, I would say, of this Zulok that we saw come to meta sort of one and a half, two months ago now. It runs that Enhancer Meccano uh, with the Sea Giants. A lot of the, the Western players, they decided to sub out Enhancer Meccano because of its variability. It could straight up win you or straight up lose you the game in some situations. So. And I love how different regions do have these different metas and yeah. they, they bring them into different metas. It's uh, it's always great to see. I mean, in Hanson Meccano, so I know some people don't like it. I have tried running it. It didn't really work for me because it didn't come at the right times. Even when it did, it didn't give me what I wanted. It's just one of those things. If, yeah. if, you, if you can hedge your bets and you say, okay, I'm going to get lucky here, then yeah, why not play it? That's what Hearthstone is sometimes, right? You can't even play Knife Juggler here, right? Because he just dies to this. I guess you tap, hope for Abusive Sergeant, something along those lines. Big Game Hunter, okay. But Big Game Hunter would... Also dies, but you value your Knife Juggler over the Big Game Hunter in this situation, I suppose. But why, why play it? I mean, it's yeah. just going to die because he runs his Unstable Ghoul into... I think Green Team knows. Yeah. It's yeah. a decision that could either yeah. go for him or against, against him. him. And again, <laughs> it's, it's one of those situations where it could be a misplay. Um, I guess he wants to deal with the unstable ghoul as quickly as possible. That was his theory. 
But I, I do feel like keeping that BGH, especially since you know he plays Boom, right? And you have that BGH in, BGH in there specifically. I think the thought process is probably something along the lines of this whirlwind effect is going to do one damage, this has two damage, and then you play it and you're like, oh no, wait, you can attack in. It's just one of the, where he's thinking too quick and played a little bit too fast, yeah. perhaps. I think one thing as well is actually there's an argument to be made to play the knife juggler anyway, just because you're against a patron deck. You don't really, really want to hold on to that too yeah. much. You, that that makes a lot of sense, much. You I can think that's really, a... really kind of bite yourself in the ass. Well, I mean, you can argue he wouldn't play anything, but I suppose by playing the big game hunter, he, he does at least clear that unstable goal and allows him to put his stuff on the board afterwards. But he's got yeah. the uh, he's got the death spike with the charge. He's got some patrons. I quite like the double dread corsair inclusion from Soto, by the way. I think it's a it's definitely a tech decision. Against it's it's fantastic race. against yeah. these ag aggro decks because yes. it just slows down. It's kind of the thing that this deck struggles to deal with the most, and it's a it's and a the solid. And you can play them for free. Yeah, and you've exactly. got a death spike up as well. Nice. So I was just gonna he's gonna take one extra patron here. He's saying, right, like, what can how can realistically can you kill both of these when I've got a dread corsair up? It's looking good for Soto right now. It certainly is. The only issue being for him is when he tries to proc more patrons, he is going to pop these eggs. However, with a board like this, 144 isn't going to be too much of an issue. That tall. Yeah, this is what I don't like about Enhancer Mechano. Well, uh, do you know what? This is actually not awful. For it's not awful Green because Sheep. it forces the trade into one of them. Yeah, but then also you can power overwhelming, wind fury, yeah. egg next turn, which will deal with two patrons by itself. So it's not awful. It's not awful, I just hate it. I just hate Enhancer Mechano. I just think there's better minions you can play in that manner. It, it, it can straight up win you or straight up lose you the game. It's just it's just the win card, isn't it? It's, it is one of those risk-taking cards that if you want to win the game quickly, you just play your Enhancer Mechano. If it had dropped two Divine Shields, would you have been happy there? That's no. no, Divine Shields would have been the worst, obviously. It's, yeah, it's yeah. So it's, and that's the kind of risk it so. can pose. Play the core Corona Elite, trade into the 4 4. Now he's probably. Do you think he leaves this, the Rubian Egg? He doesn't even consider the power overwhelming on it, or do you think he just takes it out? I don't. You, well, you probably wouldn't even think about the power overwhelming, right? Well, I mean, it's always going to be in your head. I mean, it's always going to be an option, but realistically, do you have. There's no real answer to the 4 4 without just wiping out your whole board, so I don't think that's something yeah. that you can really consider too heavily. But obviously, <laughs> we know it is there. Sotl shaking or nodding his head. I think Luckily for Sotl though, he does have another patron in his hand. However, no activators available. Yeah, but he's got he's got Grom and he's almost close to getting towards finishing range here. Yeah. And also, let's remember that he has ten armor. It's not uh, feeling too unhealthy right now. There's the sea giant. His life taps just gonna get him at all. So, so that 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 would be in a rage lethal once Grom's up, right? Yeah. So we want to turn yeah. eight. Yeah. yeah if he yeah. was able to get in a rage, yeah. So I mean, even the unstable ghoul patron here yeah. is a possibility. It's pretty good. I'd probably just do it. If a A it buys you time. B it clears at least the knife juggler, considering he's thinking about throwing this armor smith in. Either that, or you drop the acolyte. If you're not confident with dropping a naked patron. I guess you're searching for inner rage, aren't you? At this point. Yep, definitely. Boom. And it's how CGI. brave Green Sheep will be here with his tappage. At the end of the day you're within that kind of combo. You're, yeah. you're within Grom range anyway, so you're probably not that bothered about tapping any you know you're not you're not gonna be that bothered about tapping at this point essentially. That's an execute coming out, but no inner rage just yet. As I say inner that, rage, inner rage deck. comes out, and that means subtle is unaware of his lethal. Uh, please look, subtle, subtle, <laughs> subtle. <laughs> Come on, man, you can do it. Subtle. Do the maths. Don't get punished, friend. Subtle Twitch chat is telling you. Oh, oh subtle. God. <laughs> oh god. He's tilted. Subtle Twitch chat was telling you. That's so painful. I mean, but he's got it next turn, right? He can, if he he can still survive here, and then 
He's, 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 he's seen just it seen it. He's just seen it. <laughs> Look at his face. Look at his face. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I was I was so worried that he was going to like in a rage execute the boom or something and then realize that would have been He's oh. just seen it. Oh no. <laughs> oh, and the arc is and the arc is off the top. Is well. off the top. Oh, oh my god! No. I mean, he can execute with the arc. He can still execute. No, he can't. He can't. Still can't get past both of the taunts. Oh, that's that feels really. <laughs> I really bad. Had what to say. <laughs> no, it was just. Um, I'm gonna, see, he's gonna see he's punished. <laughs> he's oh god! <laughs> that was a misplay. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a, a decision that either goes for you or against <laughs> you. Oh. oh. Does it matter? Let's figure it out, right? So he can't get past both these taunts. He has to, even if he was to. Well, he doesn't actually. Execute. He doesn't actively need the inner rage Gromash combo now because it's 10, 10 HP. So the death spike can proc the Gromash to win the game. So, so he could death spike into the Imp Gang boss, or well, he, he can inner rage and execute. To, the inner rage and execute, yeah. And then you want to have that death spike. So you're gonna Primed. you're gonna have to Primed run into the gang boss, and you, you you are feeling fairly healthy at this point. Yeah. So I think I think this is still I don't want to call it too early. It's still a victory. Unless point. another defender of Argus off the top. Even that won't do it. No, he's not got enough damage on board. He's gonna have to tap. Defender oh, of Argus. No. <laughs> oh no. No. Oh, no. I'm awful. I ruin everyone's day. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Uh, uh, just and nodding. Sol is the type he of player knows. that will he will say, "Look, I, 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 screwed screwed I deserve yeah. that." Yeah. And that was... that's pretty much gonna guarantee it, and will secure Green Sheep with the three zero. Um, actually. With Whirlwind. With Whirlwind, can he... Yeah, yeah, with Whirlwind, you trade into the 3-4 yeah, Death yeah, by yeah, just Whirlwind. The Whirlwind off the top is huge. Play, please play Grom. Please play Grom. Please play Grom. Notice it. Please notice it. Sen senpai, please. <laughs> I was about to say Senpai, notice. And then but if uh, the boom bots boom could... Bots, oh, crap. Okay, no. Wait. You can... No, you can death... You, you, you have to risk it. You can death bite first, though. You can death... You could have death bite first. But if the boom bots hit you now, both for 3 and 4, you die. You couldn't have taken the risk. There oh, is yeah. no other option. Uh, Two and one. Oh, yeah, there we wins. go. He wins. He wins. He wins. Woo! That Woo! was uh, that was a ride, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Sauls. That just puts it perfectly. His face, like, ah, we did it, boys. We're alive. But well, that was an interesting match. Sottle just getting away with it by the skin of his teeth. Sottle, I, I said you are the best patron player in <laughs> Europe. <laughs> if not the world. If, if not the world. Um, oh my goodness. But I mean, uh, we all make those mistakes, but he still gets the win. And we, all, we, all, we all make those still, cast misplays sometimes. We still... No, I will stand I, by my statement. I, I, I think I'm, he's fantastic. I'm winding you up. I know I'm you winding are. you up. I, 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 I think Sotl is a very good player. I just think he, he is emotional. He, he, Aren't we all? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling really emotional after that game. <laughs> you know, I, I'm the same. If I, heart's I, a flutter. I, I'll be honest. I've never competed in Hearthstone professionally, but I imagine... Yeah, I know. Look at your face. I imagine if I was in that situation, I'd just lost two patron games. I'd be like... Uh, I'm really overthinking everything. I need to clear this board. I'm not really thinking about lethal. And the first thing I got, I mean, I got half stone coaching a long time ago now when I was really bad. I just wanted to be coached and try and see if I can improve at the game. And the guy was like, every turn, you need to think about whether you've got lethal. Obviously not like turn one, but every turn, you know, when you're getting towards that stage, just think about if you've got lethal. Count is roping every turn. Just, oh. Count your damage. <laughs> it's like got a die wolf alpha on board. Like, <laughs> can I do no, this you are, you are completely just, right. Just count, that you, is that, that's rule why, number one. That's why you see me when I cast. I'm, I'm just counting damage. I just count damage over and over again. And, and I just think, well, have I got the opportunity here to, to win the game? Yeah. Um, but no, you know, I'm glad Sotl won that because realistically, he had won the he game. Had won the game. I think that misplay would have haunted him for a very long time had that, that, that resulted have, in the loss. That, that would, have, would have been as well the nail in the coffin yeah, for his premier. That would have been his last, like, well, not his last game in the premiership, but within a chance to qualify still his last game in the premiership. That would have been the game that sealed the sealed the deal for him. That would have not 
been a good way to go, I think. But anyway, the series isn't over yet. It's 2-1 now to Green Sheep, and Sotl has managed to clinch himself a victory with his patron deck. Let's see what else he's got to bring to the table. It is going to be Druid and Mage up against this Zulok of Green Sheep. And by the look on Sotl's face, I'm not sure how great these decks are going to be at dealing with Zoo. He doesn't look all too pleased with his lot. I mean, if it's a tempo mage, then you're feeling relatively happy yeah. or unhappy. The tempo mage is good can, if, if you draw the right answers. If you draw the right answers, a tempo mage is good against Zulok. Sure, obviously, because you can control the board of Flame Waker. And do we think Drew, uh, he's brought a combo druid? Have yeah, we already I, I seen think the combo so. druid? No, we've only seen Patron from Sothel so far. <laughs> I just One of these players is really thinking about what they want to bring, and considering Green Sheep only has <laughs> a <laughs> Warlock, <laughs> then it's like, just hmm. always sat here thinking, I'm just going to take, gonna take like, a few minutes. I wonder if I can bring one of the decks Shall I bring Warlock or Warlock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Hmm. Hmm. This has been a fantastic day. A long one. I've had enjo I've enjoyed. It's been, it's been enjoyable. We've had. It's we've been had so enjoyable. We have had top banter, friends. We have that. We have a lot of it at my expense, but you know, <laughs> I'm happy. I to think some at everyone's them. expense. Just, if you just look at Sotl's face, I think he's just thinking, "Damn it, <laughs> that was embarrassing." <laughs> I mean, like that kind of thing happens to of course all it, players. Of course it does. Yeah. It just had to be on stream, didn't it? Like <laughs> it couldn't have just been in ladder. Oh, there we go. We are getting into it. I was going to say, do you want to respect it? But no, they've finally chosen. Sotl, after a lot of deliberation, has chosen the mage. Now I wonder. I think both both freeze and okay. te both freeze, freeze and tempo are, are pretty good in this situation. As long as you can draw the right amount of freeze, as name would suggest. And we have seen the Leroy Jenkins in Green Sheep's deck. It's also got the lower third in hand. is quite nice to have against freeze mage. It is indeed, my friend. And actually, having that now will give him the opportunity, if he can proc that ice block early, to later on have an impact, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's your big win condition against Freeze Mage, isn't it, really? But realistically, against Freeze Mage, you would say Freeze Mage is, is probably favoured. Yes. Um, if especially the Forgotten Torch variant. Yeah. I mean, it needs stuff like Frost Nova, Blizzard. Mm -hmm. It needs its Doomsayers. Mad Scientists will obviously help. I mean, it's a good early start, to be honest, for both players. It's going to coin out Mortal Coil, Reliquary Seeker, and Void Walker. Probably take the Void Walker. Yep, just a many, as many minions on board right now. You haven't really got a target with your Mortal Coil, except for this one that's just about to drop on the board, but you uh, may not have been expecting that. Yeah, you don't know. Frost Nova drawn, that's good. Frost Nova is massive. I mean, Nerubian Eggs are going to play a big big part in this game as well, actually. Yeah, they will. Um, you could Knife Juggler here, but I imagine that just dies straight to Froth Forgotten Torch next turn. But it probably is the best option that you have. Put this apple on your head. He's just going to opt to go face, which I think is the right... Kind of the right decision, though. I mean, why trade? He's going to be trading into it anyway. Yeah. Just get as much face damage as you can. Well, he knows it's Freeze now, so... Yeah. So, going to be able to clear the board a little. Yeah, that one extra damage on face could <laughs> could make the game. This is uh, you're still not worried about this this board state right now. You don't even need to trade into the one one because it can't get through that void walker. Blizzard's good. Gives he's got mad scientist as well. Yeah, he's got mad scientist. Gives he's got some a, time. a lot of good tools right now. A doomsayer would kind of top it all off. Do you ping the one three and make it obvious that you have Blizzard in hand? Yes, you do. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't know. If, I don't know if it makes it too obvious. I mean, you're still a turn away from it anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think there's it's definitely the an argument to be made to go for the peddler because next turn you could finish it with a ping. I quite like defender not on the not the on egg. the egg. Saying that it's on the egg. Mm. That means it won't die to Blizzard now. Yeah, that, that kind of favours Sotl there. I think that was why he kind of tilted his, said, his head sideways a little bit. As if to say, really? Really? That's how he said it as well. Do you bother Frost Nova this board? 
It's going to be Ice Block that he got from the... Uh, you don't bother for us, though. It's not that threatening, really, is it? Mad Scientist. You're the defender of Argus off the top. Do you probably... You probably don't play lower third at this turn. You you, want, you I think you want to save You want to save player, that yeah. for yeah. when you are in lethal range, of course, or after you've propped it. I think Green Sheep's saying now, I'm just going to put whatever I can on the board. I'm just going to keep hitting face. Let you try and deal with it. Okay. What else can you do as Zootlock, really? You could do you frost. Blizzard this early? I mean, you don't. You only kill one minion. It feels like pretty hefty waste. You could frost Nova Acolyte, ping the Acolyte next turn. Hope you draw another frost Nova. Hmm. Looks like he is going to go for you. Hmmed at the same time as Jaina. Hmm. There we go. Yep, the board's just getting a, tear you apart. <laughs> the board getting a little bit threatening, so he is gonna just drop the frost nova to delay a few things. Another Nerubian egg. And the Dark Peddler as well is gonna come out. A soul fire. I take the soul fire. Yeah, I mean just yeah. he's got the power overwhelming and a soul fire as well. He's got a few tools here to, to be to put some damage. It's good for the blizzard now. As in good for Green Sheep if that blizzard comes down. It's gonna be some free draw for Sotl though. Deciding which one to go for. Obviously, if you go for just the 1-1, one, one, that's a target that you can kill with Blizzard. Yeah. It's not really as valuable to get that one down. He draws Ice Barrier. That's going to be really good next turn. That's going to be pretty crucial in this matchup. Especially with Mad Scientist in hand, he can look for the second one or the second Ice Block as well. Abusive Sergeant. That's 14 good. damage, 15 damage that he can do. He can <laughs> nearly pop it. Pretty close. Five, seven, plus four, eleven. Yeah, fifteen damage. I guess you don't you don't bother with the acolyte. It's got one health anyway, so he's gonna push. Actually, this is looking all right for Green Sheep. He's definitely got a lot of damage on board. Yeah. We we see the ice barrier for Sotl. Well, ah, that's Frost Nova. A brilliant though. Frost Nova. It now means he can play that Frost Nova. And he can play the Mad Scientist. And then he can use his Mad Scientist to gain another Ice Barrier that's sitting so, in his deck. So now I'm trying to think, when is it worth starting to burn? Yeah. Because you've got Pyroblast in hand, you're two turns away from Pyroblast. Can you this turn Frost Nova Fireball face? Hope that you draw Frostbolt next turn. Hope that... Or check with Acolyte yeah, and find just, that just, you just, do draw yeah, Frostbolt. Just Frost Nova. Fireball now. I guess you you are worried about the lower third, but you do have your own mad scientist. But if you can force the lower third out in a turn where you can your icebox not been proc, then yeah. that feels pretty good as a freeze mage. Does feel pretty good. You could blow the frost bolt and the ice lances now, and then yeah, yeah, that's I think that's this safer turn. because you're. You're not affected as much by even, Low Third. Even if Low Third comes down, you can then just 9-mana Fireball. Yeah. And then you've got Lethal. You're still in range of the Pyroblast. You've yeah. still got the Ice Block available. Nice, friends. We learn. High five, everybody. <laughs> we did it, boys. <laughs> we did it, boys. We got Lethal. So he's you, not going to tap. Do you fall for the bait in Low Third now? Do you have to? Uh, yeah, I just... Nice. Yep. And that's it. Sotl secures victory with a 9-mana Fireball. Into a Pirate Blast next turn, obviously. And that's when we see Antique Heal Bot out of nowhere. When we see Kazan, Kazan Mystic <laughs> off the top. No. Yeah, there's, there's he not, wouldn't even be able to play it. You, 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 it's Green Sheep. You, you can't play around the Pirate Blast, really. You pop the Ice Block. There's yeah. nothing you can do. You don't tap because you're fearing maybe another Fireball. And you hope... To R and Jesus, the Pyroblast is not a card. So that Frostbolt off the top was key for Sotl. It was. It, it, I mean, even the Frostbolt now probably would have been fine because he could have done the Fireball. Uh, no, uh, I suppose, lower, yeah, you'd be more worried. Third, about you, that, you, yeah. you were better yeah. to having Frostbolt last turn. And there we go. Pyroblast secures the victory. And here. suddenly we've got another Game 5. The fourth Game this 5. <laughs> 20 <laughs> games today that we have broadcast here yeah. at the ESL UK Studios in Leicester. Well... 
it's a it's a long one, but I'm more than happy to do it if it means we get to cast. There's actually only uh, only two viewers left. It's Salt's mum and Green Sheep's mum. So thanks for sticking with us in this long. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up for me if you're a mum and you're watching the UK Premiership. <laughs> Is that the cool thing to do, right? Hi, mum. I don't think mums <laughs> care that much about coolness. No. Okay. My mum certainly doesn't. No offence, mum. Nor does my mum, to be fair. But suddenly, Sot was back in this. Yeah, he let's was talk almost about down and <laughs> out. Storylines, boys. Sotl is not zero three. He is now two and two. He is, and uh, honestly, for Green Sheep, considering he's against an opponent that was one and three, he was two zero up in the series. Green Sheep might actually be quaking in his boots a little bit here. What's this final deck? That's so the it's Druid. It's Druid. For okay, so Zulok classically has the advantage versus Druid. Um, Depends on how many early withdrawal, you know, withdrawal early removal spells you can draw from the uh, the druid. You know, you're looking for turn one living roots. You're looking for turn two wild growth, turn four swipe, that kind of thing. Well, there's the wild growth already, and every other late game card you have in your deck it could be a ramp druid. You never know. Ancient of War yeah. is sometimes included in both. See what it gets for his starting hand. Wrath okay. is there. Under the Aspirant. 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 I don't mind coining a Dionysus Aspirin out in this situation. Against a zoo, yeah. I think that feels absolutely fine. And then next turn, just go for the wild growth. Do you know what's hilarious? Or when, even round. When I first played against Dionysus Aspirin, I silenced it. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon everyone's made that mistake at some yeah. point in their lives. This is okay in the situation. Actually, you could just wrath this. Which you will. Yeah. Keep the free mana. Hope to draw a shredder. Yes, for sure. It's not bad though. Yeah, the void walker off the top will protect the knife juggler. Or the iron bee cow. Or the haunted creeper. Why do you call? Or the life tap. <laughs> That's not well, a bad card, though. There's the Keeper of the Grove. Do you silence your own Aspirant? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, really? I don't know. No, surely not. It's just too powerful at, at dealing with stuff from the Warlock. I mean, I'd be tempted to... I would have been tempted to. Yeah, okay, it deals with a lot, but in theory... Free mana, boys. Implosion. Aspirant. Surely. Surely. Two. Just the two. That's all we needed. You can silence the uh, Haunted Creeper here. Or, you know. Yeah, or just Taunt. Or just Taunt. Taunt, and then you've got a swipe as well, which feels quite good. It's not looking too yeah. bad for Subtle. No, it's not. It, it's kind of like, if you play that Taunt there against the Zulok, you're saying, okay, either burn your silence or burn a Power Overwhelming or just don't get it. Like, what other answer is there in a Zulok deck? And... It, it sucks if you're playing Zoo to have to use those kinds of cards early because a lot of the time those are the cards that actually give you your win condition. They give you your way to actually finish the game. He is going to silence. And this is a really nice swipe for Sotl. <laughs> this is such a nice swipe. You know, he's going to trade in that 4 6 into the Haunted Creeper and swipe away, probably hero power, that final. Uh, and green sheep. He can see it. That's painful. We've all we've all been, been in that situation as a zoo, and there's not really a way to play around it. You can't not like the implosion was the play to make on that. that the, uh, the issue with the zoo, and we talked about it very early in the ESL Premiership, is that you just can't not really commit to board. Yeah, there is a there is a point where you don't want to overcommit to board, but. You, not committing to board just plays against everything that Zoo is designed to do. And it's a very clunky hand here from Green Sheep. We're going to see the Ancient of Law next turn for Sotl, and suddenly the reverse sweep is real. It is real. It's very real, and especially after so nearly missing Lethal and being punished for it. Sotl was on the brink here of staying alive in the UK Premiership, Munchables. Just not, not wrong. Yeah, that's fine. You are not wrong. Well, here we go. Actually, Defender of Argus onto the Knife Juggler. Interesting decision. I mean, do you guys agree with that play? Would you have tapped first to see what you get? 
I, I would have potentially tapped I personally first, would then have tried to hold the Argus and maybe get a Sea Giant Argus later. But if the Knife Juggler had hit the Druid of the Claw, then you feel a little bit better about that turn. Yeah, but I'm not a, I'm not a good Hearthstone player, so... Yeah, exactly. We already know that. I think you are. Oh. I don't think you should play yourself down. You made legend. Like like a lot of people do not do that. The two the two ways to go about that comment from here, and you're like, I think you are. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's true. Not everyone can make legend with secret paladin. <laughs> I actually can't. I already told you. I never get a challenger. The double shredder coming down. Did you just say challenger? Mysterious challenger. Oh, I was gonna say. It's a card in Hearthstone. Yeah, I got that. I just know. thought you were making another reference to another popular game. I don't know what game you're talking Nor about. Nor do I, it's friend. Nick Scoundrel, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you just ram face here? Yep, he's going to choose a ram face. I bet the sea giant. Savage Roar with Force of Nature. Savage Roar! There we go. Nature, off the top. Bada bing, bada boom. What a way to finish the Premiership this week, because next week we will not even see that combo, as we will be entering standard play. And that Sotter will be entering standard play, still with a chance to qualify for playoffs. Yeah, these segways, these segways tonight have been pretty fantastic. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm impressed. Thank you, mate. I I live to impress you specifically, but.